episode 88, take four. There's so many different ways to light a scene. So many. This has prompted me to start a series of videos going through common scenarios that you run into as a DP and one way to light it. Today we're starting with the nighttime dinner table sequence and considering the current state of the world we're going to do it entirely within my house with the equipment that I own. So we've got a Blackmagic Pocket 6K with an 18 to 35 millimeter Sigma, a few C stands, a Westcott Solix with an Apollo orb, some gels, a reflector and some white fabric, some black fabric for negative fill and some muslin for diffusion. So here's the final product and let's go through the process. To start, this is the space we were looking at and it's kind of bland. It's got white walls, white tiles, really ugly curtains in the background. It's not a great place to start, but it's what we had. The first step was to work out what angles we wanted and we knew we wanted one wide and a series of close-up shots as well. So one close-up on the character and then a couple of cutaway extreme close-ups of props. Now that we knew our camera blocking, we knew exactly where we wanted to place props or where we wanted to place the lighting and the camera to make everything work cohesively. And with a simple scene like this, it was much easier to start with the wide shot and then move our way in. So now we have a good frame, but the lighting is really bad. My first thought for a room like this is to try and keep the light off the walls. You've got to try and control whatever light source you have because there's white walls, white floors, everything's just gonna bounce everywhere. If you put a light into a corner, you're gonna just have a very bland lighting setup. So the key is to control it. So for our key light, we decided to suspend the Solix in the orb above the table using a C-stand. We faced the Solix out of the orb instead of reflecting into the dish, just to give it a little bit more power, a little bit more direction, and to make sure we didn't lose too much light when we gelled it because it is a daylight balanced light. We wanted to bring it to tungsten, so we had to use a full CTO or color temperature orange gel to get it to the tungsten color. To enhance the warmth and diffuse the light, we ended up using unbleached muslin instead of just a regular diffusion. Unbleached muslin is my favorite type of diffusion, especially when I'm filming people. To hold all of that in, we used a 90 degree grid this is going to focus the light a bit more and keep it a bit more direct down on the table instead of spilling out everywhere. There was still something missing after we placed that initial light. Something seemed a little off. It's like the room was too bare and having just plain white walls, it really didn't help. So Dustin had to search around the house and we found a couple of props to put in the back of shot to break up that back corner a bit. We opened up the blinds a little bit as well, inviting the outside darkness in because the blinds are white and if you close them, then it's just one big white patch. It just creates something interesting. I was gonna put a light outside the window, but I think that would have made the scene look a little bit more lit. I feel like in our final product, what we did was a little bit more moody and adding that light would have maybe complicated things a bit more. We also found a photo that we could stick to the wall to make it look like there was a picture hanging there. It breaks up the background, especially when we get to the close up of our character because there's absolutely nothing on the wall behind him. Set dressing is super important. It goes hand in hand with cinematography. Trust me on your next project, if you have a set dresser or you have to think about set dressing yourself, really do have a hard think about it because it's gonna make your cinematography so much better. So this lighting setup for a wide, I thought it looked great. It didn't really need anything else. It didn't have to be complicated. It's just one light. And then we're utilizing that to the best of our abilities in a white room and then using set dressing to break things up a little bit. It has motivation and it can be remodeled when we get to the close-ups. I don't like to overcomplicate lighting setups, especially when it comes to wides, just because it can look very artificial and the key is to make it look natural. The best lighting I think is the kind where the audience doesn't notice it. For the close-ups we were able to shuffle things around a little bit to our advantage and make sure we shaped and modeled the face. With the light directly above the table it was reflecting quite a lot on the light wood of the table itself and we thought we could control that a little bit more for these close-ups. It was either adding more bounce by putting white fabric underneath 
or adding a neg over the table just underneath our character's face to reduce that bounce. After a little bit of trial and error, we ended up going for a mix of both. It kind of worked out. We didn't want to get rid of it completely, but we also didn't want just the raw table underneath. I already found the fall off on the camera left side to be quite appealing. I didn't think it needed anything else. I don't think it needed a neg there at all, but it, by all means, if you wanted more shape, more intensity in that shadow, you could bring a neg in to the left side of camera to bring down that side of the face. To the camera right, however, we did want to bring that side of the face up a little bit, have a little bit more of an eye light, just to emulate that lamp that was in the corner. So we brought the lamp closer. It wasn't gonna be in shot, so we just brought it closer to the action. I also wanted to have a look at putting a little bit of a gradient on the wall in the background. It just creates a little bit more separation. So we had a look at a reflector. We ended up going gold side and reflecting the table light back into the back wall, trying to focus it to the darker side of the face so that it creates a little bit more separation between our character and the white background. And from there, it was super easy to go through all of the extreme close-ups of the props that we had because the lighting setup was pretty much done. We just had to move a few things around slightly just to get the right lighting, but otherwise it was complete. All round, this setup is really simple and it was all with one film light, a practical light and some set dressing and a lot of control. This was really fun to set up and I really enjoyed it. If you guys wanna see more videos like this and you have any suggestions for different scenarios, that you'd like to see as a one way to light setup, then leave them down below. I'd love to see. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you're staying safe, and I'll see you next week. Do you have a pet? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever go walking under a pale moonlight? Do you ever go mountain biking? <laughs>